Um, the way that we define it was, it's India's first youth-driven Gen Z media and inside solutions organization. Uh, our mission is very simple, it's to make young Indians feel less alone. Um, and that comes from a thing that we do called the road show. Uh, since 2019, we've been going on the road. We visited over 120 colleges, uh, over about 50 cities and towns. We go there, we just talk to people about mental health and then we create spaces where they can come and talk to us about stuff. And those insights, we've met over 15,000 young people, those insights really are what contribute to this presentation and what we're, what we're going to talk about. Um, you can go next. Yeah. So, uh, you can follow us on Instagram if you don't already. We have about 360,000 followers. Uh, we reach millions of people uh, every week. And very often, we get comments uh, like this. I won't read them out um, <laughs> out loud. You can read them, but um, yeah, I guess like nothing out of the ordinary. This is stuff that I'm sure all of you have seen on some corner of the internet. Um, <clears throat> I think like the challenge for us becomes. Sorry. Oh, uh, we are you, honest. Uh, why you read double? Please follow us. Uh, <laughs> so we see all of these comments, um, but. The way that we ha have to interpret these comments come down, I think, to two broad things, right? What are young men really telling us when they tell us that they don't understand our comment, uh, content or they think that we have a feminazi agenda or they think that we are not talking about issues of men uh, enough? And it really comes down to two broad insights, right? Number one is, I don't have a safe space to talk about my issues where I can feel heard as a man. And number two is, I don't trust what feminism stands for. Uh, again, like I said, normally what would happen in this case is you would have somebody from an oppressed gender having to take the emotional burden to explain to young men that feminism is in all our best interests or equality is in all our best interests. And you have a safe space to talk about stuff, but you shouldn't do it in retaliation to somebody from another gender talking about their issues. You cannot go to a post about assault and say, what about all the men who are assault? And that's not the right way to do it. Um, but we have been really thinking about solving these problems. Because I think we tend to sometimes try to talk to people who are already like us or already converted in terms of the ideologies that we have. But a large part of the challenge of course is reaching out to people who don't believe in the same value systems as us. So I'll break, this presentation is split into two things and how we try to solve these issues largely. Right? So we can go next, the first one is creating safe spaces uh, or safer spaces. Um, I've told you about the roadshow. We went across uh, a bunch of colleges uh, before the pandemic to speak to young people. Uh, we got a lot of insights uh, into that, uh, into what they're thinking. And we created, like, I, I mean, I think the word, the term safe space has also become a little bit overused. So I, 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 as I've written, we created neutral spaces where essentially we met them in colleges, but then we went to a bunch of cafes, invited them and said, why don't you just come and talk about something that uh, you care about? And we've collected thousands of stories. Oh, my Hindi is terrible. Uh, the conversation, I assure you, will include Hindi. If I talk Hindi, you'll walk out. <laughs> it's really bad. I can try but it will be really bad. This is the limit. Uh, but if, if I'm going too fast, or if there are questions, I'm happy to uh, kind of pause and answer, right? Um, one of the really interesting things that we look for is gender-specific insights when we're talking to young people. Uh, what do men have to say? What do people from other genders have to say? Uh, and how is that different? So some of the stuff that we've noticed um, and I'll, I'll give you like a little glimpse of what it's like, right? So this is our process that we follow in general when we're putting out content. The first step is listening to young people. We, friendships, relationships, that's the number one thing that young people want to talk about, right? Anything that looks like, and if you see all of these things, gender, gender discrimination is probably the only social issue that they talk about. Everything else is lived experience. I'm a person in college, my family doesn't listen to me. I'm not doing well in school, I don't know how to get better at that. My mental health is in a bad place. I don't know what I'm going to do with my career. I don't know when I'll fall in love. A lot of it is centered around lived experiences and hence our content also has to. But the interesting bit about this I think was when we did the gender split and this is coming into our conversation about um, young men and boys. Overwhelmingly, uh, the, the stuff in blue, sorry for the uh, generic color coding, it was done in 2019. Uh, we couldn't do it. But <laughs> the stuff in blue is basically what uh, young men thought is important to them. 
So, very few men are talking about gender discrimination because obviously you come from a place of privilege but you don't realize it. But what they're talking about a lot again is love relationships and friendship, right? And when I say love relationships, that uh, overwhelming part of that is family. They feel that they're not understood at home. Um, you can go to the next slide. And what we now try to do is contextualize all of these insights again into lived experiences of people, right? A lot of young men that we spoke to have been bullied in some context or the other. A lot of them have trouble expressing themselves. And this is, I think, what we see online when young men are coming to comment sections and saying, what about me? What about people like me? What about men? What about my gender? What about my community? Why is nobody talking about it? It essentially comes from not having somebody at home or in your setup to talk about stuff, which is why a lot of that anger gets projected on content because we are sitting in this room, we have more insight and more context into the problems of gender safety and problems that each gender faces. For them, their lived experience is so rooted in the fact that nobody is listening to me. How do you talk to this audience about things like feminism? We can't fill all of the gaps that people have because of bad family lives or bad infrastructure or bad institutions, but we try to make people feel heard, right? But this is not the last step of the process. The last step of the process is actually going through comments and seeing what we can do better, right? And this is something that we get very often and it's something that feeds into our mental process as well. Um, this is beautiful and all, I'm sure, but I still can't share this with my dad. Right? Um, it talks about invisible walls. Uh, a lot of people say this. Like a lot of the videos that we did about parent-child relationships, gender, etc. We said share this on your family WhatsApp group or share this with people who are close to you. But even that is difficult, which I think gives us a sobering reminder of how big the challenge really is. That we are not able to have these conversations at home. Um, and we want to change the world, we, we, want, we look at this from a macro lens and we're like, this behavior needs to change. But I think we, because we're very connected with our young audience, we, we're constantly reminded of how long we have to go, but one step at a time. Um, the next part of this um, presentation, now that we've talked about safe spaces, is breaking feminism down for people. Why do so many people, why do so many men, why do so many boys misunderstand what feminism is? Why has it become a bad word? Or to a certain section of society, a big section of society. Um, as part of the roadshow that, um, you can go next. As part of the roadshow that we were uh, doing, we asked our audience two questions. Um, number one, how many people think that people of all genders should have equal rights? Uh, and 99% of people said yes. And then we said, how many of you are feminists? And less than 50% said yes. Uh, it essentially means the same thing. <laughs> but. Yeah, it's, it's become a term that is associated with a certain kind of stigma for whatever reason. There is misunderstanding that needs to be cleared. Um, having this conversation with, the, I think, Natasha only the other day that how important is it for us to say the word feminism? Like, is it more important for us to get people to believe that feminism is not a bad word? Or is it more important for us to get people to be feminists even if they don't call themselves feminists? And these are again some of the things that we grapple with. But this is the interactive part of this session, so I'd like to introduce uh, Yash Pise. Uh, he's our head of business at Yuva. Uh, he looks after our research and community verticals, but the reason that he's uh, on this panel is because uh, he's a social media star. He has he has a property called Men Ki Baat, where he breaks down... Uh, actually, we should show the reels. No, you Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll show you like one or two of the reels, but he tries to break down uh, feminism for people in an inter interesting way. And uh, until very recently, as not. <laughs> Uh, it's fine, I'm not taking it personally. Uh, until, until very recently, uh, or not very recently, but until a few years ago, Yash wasn't a feminist either. Like, he's not saying it. And he's gone through a journey which we'll talk about, uh, but you should see his lovely reels first because they're really awesome.
Is that cute? No? Yash, on top of all of his other responsibilities, has the unenviable task of doing like 30 second reels and explaining concepts to people, uh, which even I don't dare do. Uh, and I was a journalist for five years and I still like that's territory I've stayed out of. Um, but we're going to explore his personal journey. We're going to talk about the content that he makes and the kind of comments that he receives and get a few more insights into why feminism is a bad word. Uh, now, yes, thanks. He's been standing there. Uh, huge round of applause for Yash. मुझे हिंदी आती है तो मैं हिंदी में बात करने की कोशिश करूँगा। जिंगो इस इंस्पायर्ड बट इट्स इट्स फाइन। नो लाइक व्हाट केविन सेड इज वेरी ट्रू। इफ यू हैड आस्क्ड मी 2013 आई मैन वो फेमिनिस्ट मैंने बहुत स्ट्रेटली आंसर दिया कि नहीं। एंड आई डोंट बिलीव इन एनी ऑफ़ दिस। इट टूक म for him to sit to me and tell me that like, this is what you need to unlearn. And the reason why I said I was not a feminist is because what was told to me since I was growing up. And I remember like yesterday when Kevin and I decided that we are going to talk about it, I was thinking where was this thought coming from to me. Uh, and I remember this one particular incident which I know is the start for me believing that I was not a feminist. Uh, I was school in 7th grade and I used to go to tuitions. And those tuitions were my teacher. Routine. And I used to respect her a lot because she was really great. She was one of the teachers who you listen to you. But she very casually one day had said that like, and we were all studying and we were like, she told her that you have to study from the dumb, or you will waste a seat. You will get a reservation from reservation, but you will not do anything. So, if you sit on that seat, you will not sit on that seat. So, you will not sit on that seat. And I was like, that's so true. Like, I will get 88% marks and I will get 60% marks and she is still going to take my seat. And that's unfair for me. Like, why is this happening to me? And I started inculcating that into me. Saying, like, yes, this is going to be wrong. Like, every right that I have is going to be taken away from me, because there is no wrong in my own. Like, I have studied, I have learned marks, but that seat can't be able to get me, because the girl will sit there. Same thing started happening when I started seeing seats reserved for women in the buses. And I'm like, I'm also so tired, I'm also going to the office, so why is this not for me? Why is there special treatment given to women? Like, everyone is talking about equality, but where is equality going to go? Like, why don't I get to sit here? And that was getting inculcated in me very strong, because I could see that happening on a day-to-day basis. No one had ever told me why is this happening. What is behind this logic? Why have we done this? And the day me and my best friend, like we were literally fighting on Delhi airport at 1 o'clock in the night till 4 o'clock in the morning happening. And that's the day I started unlearning these things. For a person who has done an MBA, who has seen the world most of it, it took me 4 hours and my best friend to come and have a conversation with me and telling me like, yes, you need to unlearn. And that's the day when I started saying like, okay, let's see from a different perspective. I started talking to a lot of my female friends, talking to a lot of people from other genders understanding what is this, why is this a necessity and that's when I realized that oh, this was the first playing field so bad, now we have to equal it and after that we will talk about it and then I understood that okay, it makes sense now, I understood the importance of it and that's the day I converted and since then I've been proudly saying I'm a feminist and I've said it on my reels and I've gotten really horrible comments but I understand why those comments are coming from because I was one of those and very controversial opinion and that's how I got my job at VR Uber also is uh, when I said I really love the movie Kabir Singh uh, and my CEO was in utter shock. Uh, Nikhil, uh, for those of you who don't know Nikhil, Nikhil is one of the most sympathetic men you will ever meet. He's one of the most sweetest, kindest person you will ever meet. And he's like, Yash, please tell me you have a logical explanation behind this. I'm like, huh, hey, like, man, like, now I've seen the journey from both ends and I know why I love Kabir Singh so much. It's like, Kabir Singh has problematic things, but there is a big problem in Kabir as an individual character. He being a doctor never went to a mental health professional. His friends were the ones who were instigating him, saying, like, chal, I'm going to go to the car and you go and at her house and create a mess. The friends never told him and sat down, saying, like, bro, you're doing what you're doing, that's wrong. Like that movie has multiple issues that are very well there in the men and which men love to watch all this thing because that's how they think and that's where they're coming from. They're like, yeah, this is right, we're wrong. They're like, this is my right, so I'll take it and I'll take it. But no one is speaking about why is it wrong and it shows like 
I watched that movie three times in theater, and every single time, like I being the research person, I just watching it to see research. Like, on which line is Ali Bajri? Or on which line is people exploding? Kar rahe. And I was just so shocked and surprised that men were enjoying all of this because that's what they do in daily life. But no one is telling them that they are wrong. And there is a better way to do things. Like, if someone is angry, then you don't need to be angry. 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 You don't need to be and that's how my journey to creating this content where I believe that there might be some micro impact that can come through doing these things where at least I can make one person open up for a conversation with me saying like, hey, tell me why you are saying this. And that's how I started with my journey. Um, thanks. Uh, I think you brought up Kabir Singh, which is which is a topic of discussion a lot in these circles and we, we look at it as part of the problem which is there. And I think one of the, like the reason that it works or it has worked so well with masses is that Kabir Singh is an aspirational character, right? He's a man who looks a certain way. Uh, school it does all of these things that are associated with our notions of masculinity. You and I have talked, and you told me that you used to be Kabir Singh in college. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> so now that you are here on this side, <laughs> talking to people and kind of explaining things, do you think people are more people who are not converted already are more likely to listen to you or take you seriously? Because you kind of look like a macho man. Yes, it's, it's true. Uh, like the reason I was competing in college is because वो बुलेट चलाता था, मैं भी बुलेट चलाता था. उसकी भी दाढ़ी है, मेरी भी दाढ़ी है. And for any upcoming young 11 to 12 standard बच्चे जो होते हैं, and thanks to Bollywood, a typical man should have nice six pack abs. He should play one sport at least, and he should be good at it. क्रिकेट तो इज इन ब्लड हमको क्रिकेट के बारे में पता होना ही चाहिए एंड फॉर समवन टू कम एंड टेल मी हाउ आई शुड लिव माय लाइफ आई वुड वांट टू लुक एट दैट पर्सन द रीजन व्हाई एनीवन वो सो फेमस राइट नाउ इज बिकॉज मेन वांट टू बी लाइक दैट एंड द रीजन इज बिकॉज वी बीन टॉट कि मार्को को बेदर नहीं होता यंग मैन अमिताभ बच्चन वॉज द मोस्ट फेमस द एंग्री यंग मैन वाई Even if you see the way Bollywood has worked so far, uh, there were two primary main heroes when I was growing up. One was Salman Khan, one was Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, women were more attracted to a Shah Rukh Khan because he was a nice, soft guy uh, who spoke about it, who could show emotions, who could cry on screen. Whereas there was Salman Khan who had the mad men following him like he's a god. The reason why he was shirtless, he was he used to talk in a certain way. वो लड़की को हाथ पकड़ के बोलता था मुझे छेड़ू ना डेट इस्टू बी राइट थिंग फॉर द मैन टू डू। I used to like Salman Khan. In my 10th standard farewell, I had my father bought me a really nice suit. But उस टाइम पे रेडी करके एक मूवी आई थी जिसमें Salman Khan ने एक बनियान पहना था, उसके ऊपर एक शर्ट पहना था और पीछे उसका हुड था। and I was so obsessed with him that I am not going to wear the suit that my father has bought I am going to wear that suit because Salman Khan is wearing it and that's what I used to idealize because I am thinking I need his body, I need his looks and this is what I want to do the day I started doing this thing right and I realized also the reason why I opened up to a conversation is because my best friend is someone who I trust who also follows these norms something has become sense but if someone else who doesn't Look the normal manly man way, right? You would have come and told me, I'm like, ja tu to waisa hi hai. And again, this is all before me understanding these concepts. Like this is, and I know it sounds very wrong when I say this out loud right now. But the 2013 years genuinely believe that what I'm saying was right. I'm like, tu to, tujhe nahi pata. Tu to ladki jaise bhi aapka tha, tu ladki hi hoga. Tu to unke rights ke liye baat kiya. Tu ladko ke rights ke liye thodi baat kiya. You don't look like a man, so you're not going to talk about men's right. And that's when I understood that like, yeah, if I do this, there's a chance that men at least will think, okay, he looks a certain way, he, he has certain aspect of his life that is showing us what he should be, and then he's talking about it. So, kuch to sense ban sakta hai usme. And that's when I was like, yeah, this is a great chance for me to speak to the men who I can talk about. And when like, and I used to, and as a researcher, I like talking to a lot of young students, right? Uh, and I talk to them also, right? I see this pattern when they talk about it. I see this thing, they like, school mein favorite teacher on sa hai ko kate PT ke sir ho hai. Why? Because he's the one who's pushing them to do athletic things. Why? Because that's how a man should be. Like, man should be athletic. Necessity nahi hai, but banai gai hai. Like, tum aise behave kar ke, tumko aise aise judgment milega. Hamesha, movie mein aap dekhte hai ki, like, and the reason why I was Kabir Singh in college also is, because, 
Her name is very wrong right now. Uh, there's this girl who I used to like back then and she was talking to another guy. And I got a call on my phone saying like, Yash, your girl is talking to someone else. And I'm like, how can you talk about this? And I went there. And the intention was going there was to have to protect her. And when she told me like, Yash, I don't need protection. I'm like, how can I do this? I have been trained with my children. I have to protect you. And she's like, just take a step back. I can handle myself. I'm like, no, this is wrong. And she was like, wait, relax. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to stand out here, but I'm going to still keep an eye. The intention was to protect, but why is that? Where is that intention coming from? Because everywhere is always shown that we have to protect the people. And that's how I became the biggest thing of my college. Do you? I think so. You grew up. I mean, you went to college a few years ago. Uh, we interact with Gen Zs a lot, and you, you more so than me in terms of research and insights. They have grown up at a time where they know at least about feminism. Ke mein, Instagram pe they will see these gender-focused posts. They are more aware of this kind of stuff. Um, but when you speak to young men now, from Gen Z specifically, um, do you think overall they get it more, or are, are there still? Because in our comment section, mein dekh rahe, people come, come and comment all of this stuff. Where do you think this is coming from? We didn't have internet, we didn't know exactly how it's going to work. These folks have that. Where do you think it? Yeah. I think so. There's a hope and an improvement in this. Like even if you see our comment section also. Um, we will have roughly a ratio of like 60-40 right now. Uh, I think so, at, in my generation, I think it would have been like the opposite way around. The reason why I think so is still such a stern belief is again as a word as they said. Like we saw, and, and the data proves us right as well, like they believe in gender rights now. They believe in everyone having equal rights. But the problem stands with the word that is being associated with. Because as I said, like no one has ever tried to have a conversation with men. And I think so there must be. But with those these specific men saying like what does feminism mean? I think so when you're able to explain them the concept, right? Saying like, hey, this is what it means actually. There's a chance for us to understand them. Ki, okay, that happens. Even if you see our even if you see my comment section, right? A lot of women and I think so there's a change also ki, like a lot of women are saying like I'm gonna make my son watch this so that they become like you. I'm going to tell my husband to watch this because and this is like my wife received a message saying like you're so lucky that your husband does this to you. This this is the example that I'm going to give. And if it's a conversation starter is I think so what is there. Uh, we don't know how their conversation is happening offline because what we see is mostly online probably and I, I receive messages as well saying like to Sabati Q karta and the minute I go on to the comment and say like hey let's talk come in the DM they will back off. They're like, no, we don't want to talk about it. If given a chance, they're like, no, we don't want to talk about it. But it's okay. The conversation, as I said, like, we need to have a conversation with them to understand what is their thought process for to them, things like this. The minute we understand that thought process, it is easy for us to break that bit of, like, if someone had told me a reservation in my school, the way my teacher told me, probably the years that I was not a feminist, I would have been a feminist. But no one ever, like, there's a root cause that we need to figure out. And the root cause is going to be very different and very individual for every single man who's going to, because it's lived experiences again. I have one last question, and then we'll open it up to the audience. I genuinely believe whenever we talk about stuff and not just related to gender, किसी की भी बात करते हैं, nobody who is in the wrong likes being reminded that they are wrong. And very often I think what we are guilty of, like large part of us probably left liberal or adjacent to that political view, or talk a certain way, etc. I think we are unintentionally very good at making people feel excluded and stupid. कि मैं सवाल भी नहीं पूछूँ Right? Um, ki obviously, if again there's a post about assault uh, of a woman or somebody from an oppressed gender and a man over there says, what about all of the men who are missing? They're wrong for asking, for sure, at that point. You should not bring it up and uh, this like in retaliation. But nobody really answers those comments either. You know? And part of this, of course, is why should the emotional burden again fall on women, fall on people from oppressed genders. But even men don't step in. Like if you see a comment where, like, say for example, it's a celebrity and there is a young man who has commented and said something about scene or something that's the same. You will not also have other men kind of stepping in and saying, Do you think that that's a contributor to this? Yeah, I think so. It's it's been like that. Uh, and 
I think so that, that like I have a very different thinking behind this also. It's because like see over the last couple of years, right, we have seen this happening so often that it's expected that this is going to be a natural behavior by a man. Like, it's been naya kya. Like, no one's gonna be shocked tomorrow if a man sees a comment like this. So they're like, yeah, ye to hai hi aisa. Like it's like the reason why even a bare minimum is appreciated right now is because no one has ever done that in the past, right? If we bare minimum, we can't cross it. So, we need to get appreciation. Milna like, why is a bare minimum? Like, I have played at home. So, I need to get appreciation. But, wo itne, like, we have to start, it's under minus, right? So, to get it to zero is where we have to start from. That's where the whole conversation is. Like, it's expected. Hi hai. Like, I was having a conversation with one of my friends recently on the Chandigarh incident that has happened. And the minute it was, it came out saying it's a girl who might have leaked this video. My friend was, she, she said like, it's going to be so difficult now because like, the 10 steps that we have taken forward are gone back because saying like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it would have been easy if it was a man because it's expected from them. And I'm like, why is it expected from men? She like, it's like, it's been happening for so long that it's expected. So when you see a comment coming in, you never care about it because you're like, yeah, to expect it. Like, there has to be one person who comes and does it. And so we'll be more shocked and surprised the day we don't see that happening. I think so in the 2024, uh, the Twitter incident that we did, we should have had this exercise. Like, someone has sent a picture and there's no man commenting saying like, oh, please give me your number or something of that sort. Because it's, where is expected over there? Like, there's no expectation here. And I think so that's why we need to change. Like, the standards have to be heightened saying like, here you have to be able to the standards are very important. Okay, thank you for that. Um, lots of insights, both from your personal life and, and the work that we've done. Because if this whole mission is really about reimagining power structures, not simply about replacing one oppressed people, set of oppressed people with another set of oppressive people, then this kind of creative work becomes increasingly important, however difficult it may be.